From around the globe, it's the Q with digital coverage of DockerCon Live 2020. Brought to you by Docker and its ecosystem partners. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, welcome to DockerCon. We're kind of halfway through now, I guess. Uh, thank you for joining us on this session. So my name's Elton. I'm a Docker captain, and I'm joined by Julie, who is also a Docker captain. Uh, this is actually this session was Julie's idea because we were talking about um, uh, th this this learning of Docker and, and how it, it's a light bulb moment for loads of people. But Julie actually came up with this with this great idea for a topic. So I'll let Julie uh, introduce herself and tell you a bit about what we're going to talk about. Thanks, Elton. So I'm Julie Lerman. I'm a software coach. I'm a developer. I've been a developer for over 30 years. I work independently. And yeah, I'm a Docker captain. Um, also, a Microsoft regional director. I wouldn't let them put it on there because it makes people think I work for Microsoft, but but I don't. <laughs> yeah, so the it's a, it's a weird title, isn't it? Like, so the Microsoft RD, the regional director, it's like a kind of um uber mvp okay. so i'm an mvp and that's fine that's just like a community recognition just like you get with the docker captain so mvp is a, a kind of like you know the microsoft version julie's mvp too but then you get the regional director which is something like and people get so uh, yeah it doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah so i've been using we've been using docker for years between us 10 years between us well, probably. you probably how long ago was your docker aha moment so I, uh, 2014, I first started using Docker. So I was working on a project where I was consulting for uh, uh, a team who were building a um, an Android tablet, and they were building the whole thing. So like, you know, they spec'd out the tablet, they got it built over in the in the Far East. Uh, they were building their own o OS, their own um, apps to run on it. And of course, all that stacks Linux, but they was all talking to, to services that were running in the cloud. They wanted to use Azure for that and and .NET because that was that was their their, you know, their, their technology historically. So I came in to do the, the .NET stuff that was running in Azure, but I got really friendly with the Linux guys. It was very devops -y. It was one team who did the whole thing, and they were using Docker for their, their build tools um, and for, for how they, and, and the, you know, the CI tools, and, and, and they were running their own Git server, and it was all in Docker. Already in 2014. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They were, yeah pretty, so I had a pretty early introduction to it, um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was super cool. So... I'd always been interested in Linux, but never really dug into it because the entry bar was, was so high to run stuff in Linux. So you read about this great open source project, um, and then you go and look at the, the documentation, and you have to download the source code and build it. And it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that stuff. And then Docker came along, and I do Docker run. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I would say I was a little definitely delayed from that. I'm still thinking, wait, they, when you first started saying that this client this company was building their own uh android system you know you, you start thinking okay they're building software but no they were building everything which is pretty amazing so um i have to say it took me quite a while but you know i was also behind on understanding virtual machines right <laughs> so you know darker comes along and i have Lots of friends who are using it, like, you know, I spent a lot of time with Michelle Lou Bustamante and she's a big container person, right? And I and most of the people I hear talking about Docker are really doing DevOps, which is not my thing as a developer. I've always just said, yeah, let somebody else do that stuff. I, you know, I want to code and architect and do things like that. And I also do a lot of data work. I'm not like a big data person doing uh, analytics, um, and I'm not a DBA. I'm more very involved in getting data in and out of applications. So my aha moment, I would say it was like four years ago after Microsoft moved SQL Server over to Linux and then put it inside a Docker image. So. That was my very first experience, just saying, oh, what does this do? And I, I downloaded the image and Docker run. And then I like literally I was like, holy smokes, SQL Server is already installed. Like, okay, you know, the container's up like that. And then uh, it's got to run a couple of Bash and SQL scripts to get all the system tables and databases and things like that. So that's another 15 seconds, right? But that was <laughs> literally for me, the not really a high, it was more like OMG and I'll, I'll keep the F out just to keep it clean here. It was my OMG moment with, with Docker. So getting that start 
then I, you know, I worked with the SQL server image and container and did some different things with that in applications. And then eventually, you know, expanded my knowledge out bit by bit and, and got a deeper understanding of it and tried more things, right? So I get to a comfort level and then add to it and add to it. Yeah, and I think the, the great thing about that is that the, as you're going on that journey, the aha moments keep coming. So like we had another, I had another yeah. aha, moment, aha moment this week with yeah. the, the new announcement that you can use your Docker compose files and use your Docker commands to spin stuff up running in Azure container instances. So like that, that you've kept that learning journey is there. If you want to go down the, um, how do I how do I take my monolithic application and break it up into pieces and run those in containers? Like suddenly the fact that you can just glue all these things together and in, in run it on one platform and manage everything in the same way. Um, these light bulbs keep on coming. So yeah, um, the yeah. idea that the, I mean, you've, you've seen you've seen the kind of the modernization things that people are doing. That's that's a lot of the work that I do now. Um, taking these big applications, you just write a Docker file and you've got your 15 year old .NET application running in in the container. And you can run that in the cloud with with no changes to code. And that's you know that's super powerful for lots of people. And I think one of the really important things, especially for people like you and I, who are also teachers, um, is to try to really remember that moment. Because I know a lot of times when people are deeply expert in something, it, they forget how hard it was or what it felt like not to understand it, that context. So I still have held on to that. So when I talk, I like to do uh, introduction. I like to help people get that aha moment. And then I say, okay, now go on to the, you know, the really, really expert people. You're mm -hmm. ready to mm -hmm. learn more. But it's really important to, um, especially, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we're teachers, conference speakers, book authors, little site, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, right? But lots of other people who are working on teams, there might, they might already be somebody who's gotten there with Docker and they want to help their teammates understand Docker. So I think it's really important to, for, for everybody who wants to share that, to kind of, you know, have a little empathy and remember what that was like and, and understand that, you know, sometimes it just takes explaining it a different way, explaining maybe just tweaking your expression or some of the words or your analogies. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely true, and you often find this. It's, it's a technology that people really become uh, affectionate for. They have a real deep feeling for Docker once they start using it, and you get these internal champions in companies who say, you know, this is the stuff I've been using. Uh, I've been using this at home or whatever, um, and uh, and and they want to bring it into their projects. And uh, it's it, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to say to them, this is you know, take take people on the same journey that you've been on, or you've been on a journey which was probably. Um, Slightly more investment for you because you had to learn from scratch. Um, but now you can relay that back into your own project. So you can take, you know, you don't have to take everyone from from scratch like you did. You can say, uh, here's here's the Docker file for our own application. This is how it works. And, and bringing things into the terms that people are using every day, I think, is something that, that's super powerful. My videos are completely yeah. strange. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was being really cool about about your video. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Oh, maybe it's just how it's streaming back to me. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's, I think the teacher thing again, right? Like we'll work a little harder and, you know, bump our knees and stub our toes or tear our hair out or whatever pain we have to go through with that learning because it's also kind of obsessive. And you can steer people away from those things. Although it's also helpful to, let them be aware like this might happen and if it does it's because of this but you know that's not the happy path yeah yeah absolutely and um and, and you know i think they and it's really interesting talking to people out there uh, kind of trying to get to where what problem are they trying to solve it's interesting you talked about devops there and how that's kind of not an area that you that you've done a lot of stuff in i've worked in a couple of organizations where they're, they're really trying hard to move to that model and trying to break down the barriers between the team who build the software and the team who run the software. But well, they've had those barriers for 20 years. And it's really hard to break that stuff down. Um, it's a big cultural shift. It needs a lot of investment. But if you, if you can make a technological change as well, if you can get people using the same tools, the same languages, the same, the same, um, the same, the same kind of processes to do things, that makes it so much easier. Like now my, my operators are using 
Docker files and, and the security team are going into the Docker file and hardening it, or uh, the ops team are, are building up my compose file or my Kubernetes file, and everyone's using the same thing, yeah. and it really helps that, you know, to, 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 to bind people together to work on the same, same area. It, this is, um, I, I also do a lot of work in domain driven design and that whole idea of collaboration and bringing together teams that don't normally work together and bringing them together and enabling them to find a way to collaborate and giving them tools for collaboration. Just like what you're saying with, uh, you know, having the same terms and using the same tools, right? So that's really powerful. You gave me a great example of one of your clients' aha moments with Docker. Do you, the, the do you remember one. which that the was? Angle. The money, the money. <laughs> yes, that's a very, very powerful aha. Oh, yes, yeah, so I went into the, um, the company that I'd worked for before when I was when I was doing just .NET, .NET consulting. Um, they knew I'd got into containers. I was working for Docker at the time, and I went in just as a it wasn't a sales pitch or anything like that. It was just as a favor to talk to them about what you know what containers would look like if it came into their operation. Uh, big heavy Windows users, a huge number of environments, um, lots of VMs that are all running stuff to, to get the isolation, you know, and, and give them what they needed. And I did this presentation to the of IT, so it wasn't a technical thing. It was it was very high level. It was about how containers kind of work. And I'm I'm fundamentally a technical person, so I probably have more detail in there um, than you would get from a sales pitch. But it was very much about you know you can take your applications, you can wrap them up to running these things called containers. You still get the isolation. You can run loads more of them on on the same hardware that you've got, and you don't pay a Windows license for each of those containers. You pay a license for the server that they're right. running on. That's it. That's, that's the it. moment. And the head of IT said <laughs> that's going to save us millions of dollars. <laughs> and right. that was his that was his aha moment. And I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap that into my you know uh, conference session uh, about <laughs> getting to Docker for sure. Getting getting that aha moment. Um, yeah, in no, my go, go ahead. On, go on. My my experience is less that, but wow, I mean that's so powerful. Um, you know, when you're talking to kind of C level people, right, about mm making those kinds of changes because you need to have their buy-in. So as a developer and somebody who works with developers, and that's kind of my audience, uh, my experience more has, has been uh, when I'm giving conference presentations. And, you know, I'll start out in a room of people. And I have to say, when I'm at .NET Focus Conference, I find that the not there yet with Docker Part of the audience is a big one. So I kind of do a poll at the beginning of the talk, right? Um, you know, who's, you know, heard of Docker, obviously they're, they're in the room, but, you know, curious because you still don't really understand it. And that's usually a bulk of the room. And what I like to ask at the end is, you know, of all of you that, you know, that first group, like, do you feel like you get it now? Like you just get what it is and what it does as opposed to, I don't know what this thing is. It's for rocket scientists, you know, because that's <laughs> how I felt about it. Right. I was like, mm. you know, I'm just a developer, right? Like it wasn't my thing, but now, I, I mean, I'm not, still not doing DevOps, right? I use Docker as a really important tool during development and test. And that's actually one of the, I'm going to be talking about that. Um, it's my session a little later. Oh, like the next hour, right? <laughs> um, it's about using Docker, the, that, you know, my aha Docker, right. SQL server, um, uh, in, on Linux in, in an image and, but using that in dev and test, not, it's not about the, the DevOps and the CICD and Kubernetes. I can spell it, <laughs> especially when I get to say K8S, right? Like I even know the, the cool lingo K8S yeah, okay. on, on Twitter. <laughs> I think that's that's one of the cool things about about this this technology stack in particular. I think to get the most out of it, you you need to dig in really. Like if you want to, if you're looking at doing this stuff in production, if you're attracted by the fact that I can have a managed container platform in any cloud and I can deploy my app, and just, you know, everywhere using the same set of same set of compose files or, or Kubernetes files or whatever. Um, if you really want to take advantage of that, you you kind of have to get down to the to the principles, understand it all, go on a proper kind of learning journey. Um, yeah. But if you if you don't want to do that, then you can you can kind of stop wherever it makes sense for you. So 
So like you, when, I, when I'm talking to different audiences, I, strangely enough, I did a, I did a plural site um, live stream this morning. And it was quite a specific topic. It was about building applications in containers. So it was about using containers to, to compile your app and then package it so you can, you can build them anywhere. Um, but, it, but even in a session like that, the first, the first maybe two minutes, I give a, a lightning quick overview of, of what containers are and how you use them. Because exactly like you say, people, people will come to a session if it's got Docker or Kubernetes in the title. But if they don't have the kind of the, the ent entry requirements, they've never really used this stuff, yep, then yep. suddenly we're up here and, and it's a big jump for them. So I try and always have that introductory stuff. I've, I've think, had to do that can, on the fly. And I, I've done that on the fly in a, at a <laughs> conference because yeah, I was doing yeah. like, you know, ASP.NET Core with Entity Framework and containers. Um, and, you know, like 80% of the room really didn't know anything about Docker. So, you know, instead of talking like five minutes about Docker and then demoing the rest, I ended up spending more time talking about Docker to make sure everybody was really, you could tell that difference, right? When they're like, yeah. oh, okay, like that they understood enough in order to be follow, follow along and understand the value of of what it was that I was there to show them, yeah, which is the uh, about the ASP.NET Core. You know, I'm I'm also that. this is making me remember that first time I actually used Docker Compose because it was a while, right? I was just using the SQL Server Docker image, you know, in on my development machine for quite a while, and uh, you know, because I wasn't deploying, right? I was learning and exploring, and so I was on my development machine, so I didn't need to do anything else. So the first time I really started orchestrating that was yet another aha moment right but mm. i was ready for it then right i think you know if you start with docker compose and you don't haven't done the other maybe it wouldn't right but i was ready because mm -hmm. i had already gotten used to using the tooling and and you know really understanding what was going on with the container then the docker compose was like wow <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah it's just the next the next one in the, in the line there's a great yeah. comment actually in the in the chat uh, about oh, someone from, chat. from oh, yeah, from from Steve saying that um, he could see there would be an aha moment for his uh, about about security, and actually that's that's absolutely it, it's so when when security people first kind of get their head around containers, they get worried that if someone can if someone can can um, can compromise the app in the container, they might be able to break out and get to all the other containers, and suddenly instead of having one VM compromised, you have a hundred containers compromised. But actually, when you dig into it, it's so much easier to get this kind of defense in depth. When you're building in containers, because you have your application built on a on an image that's owned by the 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 team, you know the team who produced the platform, whether it's .NET or whatever, they all have their own images that are built with best practices. Uh, you can sign your images, so, you, so your platform doesn't run anything that isn't signed. You have a full full history of exactly what's in source code, is what's in production. You know, there's there's all sorts of um, uh, ways you can layer on security there, and make and, and you know attract that side of the audience too. I've been. And looking at you this whole time, and like I forgot about the live chat. There's the live chat. <laughs> There's Scott Johnston in the live chat. Yeah, Whoa, yes, the CEO. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, people talking about Kubernetes and Swarm. I'm scrolling through quickly to see if anybody's saying, "Well, my aha moment was." There was a good one. Um, there was a good one. Uh, what was this one from Fatima earlier on? Uh, Maya was deploying that with almost no configuration onto a VM and couldn't believe it, never looked back. And that's, yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. You yeah. run one command. If your image is nicely built, so it has some sensible defaults, it just all works and, you know, everyone's happy. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing that I'm doing in, in my session is is what I love, right? Like the fact that for the development team, Right, that uh, development testing everybody on the team, and then you know again on 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 up the pipeline to CICD. It's just a matter of you know not only do you have your source code, but in your source code, you've got your Docker Compose, and your Docker Compose just makes sure that you have the development environment that you need. Right, all the yeah. the frameworks and, and every, you know everything that you need is just there. Without having to go out and find it and install it, because yeah, and there are, you know, there are no gaps. There's, there's that, no gap in the developer environment, the CI build, the production. Um, so I'm hearing you don't you don't hear, but I can hear that we we need to wrap up. Uh, oh, I'm yeah, sure you yeah. need to get you get yourself prepared for your next session, which um, everyone should should definitely. I'll, I'll be watching, and everyone else should be watching too. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, thanks Julie for for a great idea for a conversation.
was the, there was a comment in the chat about us who are probably good people to have a beer with, and I would I would certainly echo that. Oh, yeah. We live <laughs> so many thousands of miles away from one another. Yeah, well, hopefully next year uh, there'll be a little Docker Con and we can all meet and meet some of you guys. And uh, in, I in do fact. need to point out, I the last time we were together, Elton, I got a copy of Elton's book and he signed it for us. <laughs> and we took a picture There's of it. There's two more books since then. Yeah, I know. That's an old <laughs> book, but it's the one that you signed. <laughs> okay so right, we're gonna thank you so much thank everyone for joining and um yeah we'll we'll enjoy the rest of docicom bye